Hello everyone and welcome to yet another Subpixel live stream. I'm Ian Gibson coming to you live from Subpixel Midpoint. Joining us as always is Will Crosby. Will, are you out there? Will is out here. Perfect. Let me uh, let me set this up a little bit. Um, we recently got back from our first doc shoot. Uh, not our first doc shoot, but our first overseas doc shoot as Subpixel. Um, things are a little, a little harried. We kind of had to unpack recently, pretty much yesterday. Um, and we're also going to do a little bit of a special stream today. There's going to be no gameplay. Instead, we're going to be giving our hottest takes of E3. So things are a little bit in flux. It's been two weeks since we streamed. Things are a little weird. How you feeling, Will? I'm feeling great. I'm feeling alive. Great. Um because this stream wasn't even set up until about uh, 20 seconds ago. So let me kick over to what it's gonna look like. Uh, that's a lie, I'm not ready to kick over to that yet. Okay, I am now ready to kick over to what it looks like. There we go, it's gonna look a little bit like that. Um, it's probably not obvious. Is there a dark mode for, yeah, might as well yes. turn dark theme on. There you we go. Dark theme. I gotta turn you up, by the way. <clears throat> Turn me up. I like my little symbol. Um, I'm not going to be able to see any chat, by the way, so that's all you. Yeah, I got it up right now. Currently, uh, we got a question in here from Welcome to Live Chat. They say, remember to guard your privacy and abide by our community guidelines. Mm, I'm going to pass on that. Solid pass. Okay, we're going to pass on that. Now I'm just going to type that. Uh, pass. There we go. Oh, I forgot the S, so we're good. Just says pass. Um, uh, okay. how those uh, volume right there? Whew. Yep, just gonna show that off. Uh, as you can tell, you are very low for some reason. I don't know why. That's weird. Um, very weird. Oh look, Rihanna Rouge cutscene number six. Uh, this is our recommended for YouTube. So, anyways, today's stream, um, we have fifty-seven and a half minutes remaining of this stream. Um, well, how about you give us your impressions of Iceland and the Iceland trip, how you think it went while I try to find something that I saved? Sure thing. Uh, Iceland was great. Uh, we, uh, flew out, out, out there overnight on Tuesday, got in Wednesday morning, grabbed our rental car and drove to the location. Um, Iceland is a beautiful country. It is just like flat and mountainous and and nice it's very windy uh as you will see in every single uh bloody dumb behind the scenes thing i shot when those come out i just said it was windy and i would always say what time it was because the sun never set so half the time it was like three in the morning and it was bright and half the time it was three in the afternoon and it was bright but all in all it was an incredible time. We got a lot of good footage, a lot of good interviews, and I was very happy with how it turned out. Um, That's good. Yeah, yeah, I felt pretty good about it as well. It's a fantastic location. I think it's a great topic, and I think we got, like you said, a lot of good footage. Yeah. Um, very excited. And I, I want to go back. Quick question. Okay, so I've been, I saved some videos to a private list you know what i mean like you do this the save button and then you create yes. a new list and then you hit private i found it i just found it it's just weird it didn't show up in the normal okay so here i'm gonna show it again now sorry folks had to take that off the stream no worries so here's our rundown uh let me know if i'm missing anything it's microsoft bethesda ubisoft square enix and nintendo I'm just sticking to the you know the major press conferences and I figure I'll time box us 10 minutes each. So we get 10 minutes to talk about each. If we wanna cut it short, we can. If we wanna go longer, we're not allowed to. Um, and we just try to keep it, I don't wanna to say to the ultimate hot takes, but we just talk about maybe our highs of the conference, our lows of the conference, and we try to close out with an actual hot take. How's that sound? That works for me. Okay, let's go to, first of all, let me, uh, Set this up. Let me set up the countdown timer. So first up, 
It says live right now. I'm gonna go ahead and start the video. Pump it up to full screen. I'm just gonna kind of put it on beautiful, beautiful old Phil Spencer. This is the Microsoft Xbox E3 press conference. We have 10 minutes to talk about it. Starting now. Will, what did you think of the Microsoft press conference? I really, ooh, look at that cool little graphic. I really enjoyed it. I thought they did a great job uh, getting out there, showing off a butt ton of games um, in any capacity they could, talking about what's in the future, talking about what's in the future for hardware, and then uh, leaving us with a bit of a tease for the next Halo game. Yeah, I, I especially liked how, um, I think it was two years ago, or three years ago when they got kind of called out on uh, an odd use of the word exclusive and they kept popping it up in every single every time they showed a game they would you know kind of put xbox exclusive or xbox timed exclusive or first on xbox or exclusive console exclusive like at the bottom of the screen and some of them didn't end up being true or the wording was a little weird it felt like they were trying to slam exclusive on everything but this year it was the same concept but it was game pass and what made it great was that it wasn't it wasn't ambiguous at all it was very clear they were talking about their game pass that they said it was on game pass at launch that you you can pretty much guarantee that it's going to be on game pass at launch um and the fact that they slammed that on top of every video every time they put that up on the screen it made their conference much stronger yeah <clears throat> and as someone who subscribes to game pass that made me go that made me go from oh if i had to buy this i'd like i don't know if i get that to oh i'm totally gonna check this out like that that feeling of paying money for something just goes away and you're like oh i'll totally give this game a chance um yeah absolutely because the- going from this press conference to either the ubisoft press conference or the bethesda press conference or even like an imagined sony press conference even though they weren't at e3 in those press conferences, the question was, hmm, am I going to buy this game? Am I going to pay 60 bucks for this game? Whereas in the the Microsoft press conference, if it said Game Pass, it was, oh, I'll give that a shot. I'll give that a shot. It's basically a free game. And that's I think that's so forward thinking of them to lean into Game Pass that hard and to then present it so heavily at E3. It, become, it no longer becomes them selling games to me. It feels like they are showing the games I am going to play. And that's yeah. awesome. And that concept works, and I know it works. We has those games like like we play Sea of Thieves together, and we only play that. Like, granted, I bought that game and it came out, but you only play that because you have Game Pass. And that Void Bastards game, I love, and I only checked it out because it was on Game Pass. Yeah, like yeah, that concept absolutely. of getting someone to check your game out because it's launching on a program is, and they've done such a good job showing that off. Yep. So we're talking about Game Pass, um, I think one of the big things they they announced it previously, but they clarified it in the press conference was PC Game Pass, which now includes PC games uh, outside of the Xbox Play Anywhere designation. It's five dollars a month, but I think uh, we we had discussed this a lot before the Microsoft press conference. But after they had announced it, it was a little confusing just in terms of why would you get this versus the Xbox Game Pass? Why would you pay for both? But I think they clarified it really well by just saying Xbox Ultimate Game Pass is Game Pass, Xbox Gold, and PC Gaming Pass, fifteen dollars a month, and just kind of clarifying. I, I don't I don't want to necessarily say it clarifies the individual purpose purchases. It just right. makes it easier to bulk them together in a in what I think is actually really a really good deal. It doesn't make sense for you if you have a PC. Well, if you have a PC only, then just get PC Gaming Pass. If you have an Xbox. And then get the ultimate game pass. If you have a PC and an Xbox, then get the ultimate game pass. You know yeah, what I mean? And they did also like briefly mention there's like 15 studios that are making like they're getting PC only games from. So yes. like yeah. if you're just want to get more PC games, then there's the mm-hmm. opportunity for you. Okay, so let's um, take a little bit and talk about games. What do you think was the game that you um I don't want to say enjoyed the most, but what game got you the most excited? Which game presented in the conference are you the most hype about? 
Um, I, I, it's probably not the one I'm most hype about, but it's the only one I can remember right now. Is probably what? Cyberpunk 2077. Yeah. So um, let me. That stuff was crazy. With Keanu coming on stage, that's oh my, that's a fantastic gosh. E3 moment. Yeah, absolutely. Which I'll say that whole. Do you hear about the the guy yelled "You're breathtaking" to Keanu Reeves? Keanu yep. Reeves yelled back, "No, you're breathtaking." And then Cyberpunk offered that guy a collector's edition of Cyberpunk 2077, and this guy who is of the same salt of Keanu Reeves just said, "Don't give me that. Why don't you go donate to this children's hospital?" Which is a very cool thing. Yeah, it's um, it felt like the crowd reactions at the Microsoft press conference were. Uh, I don't want to say entirely genuine because it did feel like some of it was a bit hammed up, but it felt, especially in this Keanu moment, very genuine as opposed to a later press conference we'll talk about where it felt very disingenuous um, and very (laughs) forced. Um, I I think for me in terms of game, uh, Cyberpunk 2077 was great, but I want to talk about, um, I'm just trying to scroll through and find it. I'm going to abandon that idea. The one game, there was only one game when I was watching all the E3 press conferences that made me push back from my computer desk a little bit, put my hands in the air, audibly gasp, and it was during the Microsoft press conference. Can you guess which game it was? Um, I've watched so many game conferences, I can't remember anything that was announced there. So as soon as you say it, I'll probably say I did the same thing. It was Microsoft Flight Simulator. Yes. Oh, yeah. Because when they pitched it, it said it said something like real satellite data and powered by Azure AI. And I was like, this looks interesting. I wonder what this is, like a weird indie game or something, you know, where they're using live data. And then as soon as the planes came in, I was just like, it's been it's been a while since they brought it back. The last time they brought it back, it was this weird free to play with microtransactions thing. So I'm very, very excited that they're bringing it back. And I think the best part was there was just this like huge sense of relief when it said on Game Pass at launch. Because that's yeah. just like you're saying, I was willing to pay 60 bucks, but now I don't even have to worry about that because I already have Game Pass and I'm going to be playing that day one. Can't wait. Did you, did you see it was like someone said it was like three or four petabytes of data? Oh, wow. To like of world data stitched together to make the earth. Yeah. And they had like live traffic and animals. Oh, God. Yeah. I'm very, you know, I need Oof. to look up a list of E3. So, games. um, We've got two and a half minutes left. We need to talk about Scarlet. Um, yes. What did you think? I, I don't want to take too much credit, but I, I predicted this exactly where they said it's next holiday season, but we at least want to talk about it like we did with the One X. This is some some idea of the specs, but none of it's solid. These are some developers or architects talking about how excited they are about this system. Um, how did you feel about it? Um, I was very excited. I'm... I'm a very much an X-Boy, X-Boy, I'm an X-Boy, I'm an Xbox fanboy, and um, I love everything they've done, I love everything they're doing now, uh, I think Phil Spencer is a blessing for that company, and uh, I'm very excited to, uh, I'm, I'm fully going Xbox, Microsoft, next generation. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm not an Xbox fanboy, but I, I, because I didn't really like the Xbox One at launch, but I think they have turned it around. Um, I think this was the right way to announce the console. Uh, I think Phil Spencer, I wish I had the exact quote, but he said something along the lines of, we heard you, this game is, this console is about one thing and one thing only, gaming. So none of that media mumbo jumbo that they tried with the 3D60, that they tried with the Xbox One with like the HDMI pass through TV guide technology. It, It feels like they are focusing on the hardware and at the same time how that ties into xCloud, which is their streaming service, but also streaming from your console as a, in addition to streaming from an outside server. And the One X is clearly the most powerful console on the market right now. And if they continue that hardware trend, they're going to have the most powerful next-gen console. I'm very, very excited for it. Are you a, are you a day one buy right now? 100%. I'm a day one buy. I think, I think depending on price, I am as well. Because... They said four generations of games, which means it's yeah. carrying forward the backwards compatibility. It's carrying forwards the Game Pass. And unless they drastically change their launch day exclusives on Game Pass, it means that you just buy the console day one and you're going to get Halo Infinite. We got 30 seconds left. What's your Halo Infinite take? Uh, I'm very excited. I 
played up till four, did not play five, but there's something about the way this game looks. I don't know what it is, but it like looks a little bit different and it looks really exciting and I'm, I'm excited for it. So here's my hot take, um, and then I'll ask for your hot take. Uh, Halo Infinite, I have no feeling, positive feelings towards it. It looks, it looks like nothing. The cutscene didn't even display next gen technology very well. It displayed almost nothing. I never, I never played Halo Five, but as far as I can tell, it doesn't show anything story wise other than the Master Chief is is in the game, and I think that was actually a bad trailer for that game because it showed almost nothing other than it is a Halo game, and only just because it has the the Master Chief in it. What's your uh, What's your hot take from the Microsoft press conference? Uh, hot take from the Microsoft press conference is i am in love with everything there i don't think the gear stuff looked very good that's a good hot take that's a good hot take um, okay can i just say quickly elite controller 2 i'm very excited about and i'm gonna buy one okay uh next next one we have bethesda let me switch this topic around let me get this video going Let's get the timer going. Here we go. It's time to talk about... Oh, excuse me. You okay, buddy? Let me just get to the actual press conference here. You know, it's time to talk about the it's greatest about... reveal Ugh. they did at that show. Bethesda E3. Let's kick it off with that. Talk about the greatest reveal. You want, you want me to just dive in on the greatest reveal? Yeah, I don't I actually don't know what you're talking about. Commander Keen is back in. Oh my god, this press conference was <laughs> bad. It, it was, was so bad. bad. Why were it, they here? Because they're Bethesda. They're trying to be a major publisher, but who they, cares? It feels like every year they are scraping the jelly jar for the last remnants. The jelly jar. And they're just no, the last like last remnant was uh, Square Enix. Like, they just go to every studio that they unfortunately own. Full disclosure, I used to work for ZeniMax Online, who's a part of the ZeniMax Media corporate conglomerate. And they just went to every studio and they said, um, what, do you, what, what scraps you got? What can you pretty up? What can you put? What pick can you put lipstick on and shove in front of an E3 stage? Because we got to look like the big boys. I don't know why that's their voice. And every year they crap this out. And it's like some of it looks okay. Most of it is just bad. It's like they're trying to fill stage space with a game that they half-heartedly believe in. Like Blades? Elder Scrolls Blades? What are you doing? Yeah. That's yeah, the kind last, of like that's, that's just I'm sorry real quick. That's just the shovelware you shove out on the side, but you never talk about at gaming conferences. You don't put that on a stage. Yeah, I would agree. Uh, last year, I would say they had a good reason to be there. They were revealing Fallout 76. They were saying, "Listen, we're working on stupid Elder Scrolls Six. We're working on Starfield. We're, Rage is coming out. Andrew WK is here for some weird reason." That all made sense, but this year it was like, "Hey, we've got these. We've got an expansion for a game that came out three months ago. We're reviving some things. Blades is stupidly coming to the Switch. Um, oh, God. Hey, here's a bunch of us saying. Here's here's Todd Howard saying we messed up, but at least we're listening to you. Hey, here's us <laughs> bringing." He did he even say we're listening to you he was just like he just had some line where he was just like i'm surprised you're still here considering some of the games we showed last year and then they followed up with with 10 minutes of fallout 76 people going hey um listen our game we listen to you our game is amazing now come play it it's amazing now and it's like no it's not you didn't make any actual you didn't you didn't fix the engine you know, you're just now getting around to core gameplay design that should have been there in the first place. You're still gouging players in your marketplace. It's, 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 they, no, get out of here. They got people excited that they were adding NPCs to the game. <laughs> like, yeah. And they, yeah. and they, that, the worst part, the worst part is they put it aside as people are returning to the area now. Like, that was their explanation for adding NPCs is oh. that now that it's been a year of, you guys going out there and doing stuff now the people are returning and they'll have quests for you it's like come on shut up that game needs to be taken out back and shot i I thought of something i think you said it about this game is because when i saw it i said man ian and i should play that for a stream or something and i remember you said this game's so bad it's not even funny to even play it for a stream 
Like, yes, it would just exactly. be stupid. Yeah. And I would... wholeheartedly agree. Um, okay, so I, I do want to switch over to a positive note. What's something good about this press conference? Something that made you excited or happy that you, or that you enjoyed? Um, I really liked the Doom Eternal stuff. Yeah, it that looked really looks good. Crazy. Yeah, absolutely crazy. I loved the the Doom reboot. Um, uh, a lot of people who work also work here at Subpixel liked the Doom reboot. Uh, I think I'm gonna go replay it. I was just starting to download it again. But it looks like they've just taken everything in a good way and ratcheted it up to 10. Like, there's new sort of, like, systems with getting items from creatures. There's new, like, there's, like, a dash. There's uh, I just, oh, it looks so good. Yeah, it does look really good. Um, and actually made me excited to play the new one that I went back and continued playing the first one, which I, I wasn't a huge fan of. I never even finished it, but I'm kind of trying to hype myself up for the sequel. It, it looks looks really good um i think my positive takeaway is the ghost wire trailer um that trailer was phenomenal um, which one was that oh that's the right one in tokyo people disappearing yeah it just it just got better and better I, i'm not even sure if it's my type of game but i just thought like the people animation like there were shots in here where i was legitimately it was probably the bad connection or the bad video feed i was watching where oh, i couldn't tell one yeah like i couldn't tell that it was a render and yeah. not a photo because of how realistic the animations and the textures were um yeah, that game looks gorgeous yeah i i think i think that was just a fantastic trailer and then having a very a very enthusiastic hype man come out for it. I, I'm forget her name, but it was basically the creative director of the game. She came out very enthusiastic, oh, very hype. That's amazing. Yeah, I, I think that that sells your game a lot. Is you come out to somebody who is genuinely excited about what they want to show off. You know, like that Peggle Two guy. It's yeah. It sells your game really well to have at least one person on stage who is genuinely excited for it and not just reading copy. Um, mm -hmm. let's go back to um, bad mouthing Bethesda. What else did we see? Um, Wolfenstein Youngblood, so, how do you feel about that? Um, so I'll preface, well, I won't preface it actually. I think it looks good. I'm excited to um, play more Wolfenstein. I, as much as I didn't like the gameplay of two, I liked like what they were doing with the story and all that sort of stuff. So I, I'm excited to get back into that world. I really like alt, like alternate history, World War One. World mm -hmm. War One, World War Two. Um, I will say, I don't know if you saw that, but um, Jeff Gersman over at Giant Bomb was saying he wished they marketed it a different way than what they did. Like they kind of hyped up all the '80s stuff, which is one way to market it. But he said, from what he saw of raw gameplay, they should have marketed it like it's more of like a hijinks kind of like caper sort of thing that seems very okay. funny and genuine. Yeah, that sounds good. Because, like you said, I wasn't crazy about the the gameplay. It was more the it was mostly the level design that really turned me off of the, of the of the first and second game. But the story and the world and the characters were amazing, and that's what made me finish those first two games. So I'm I'm definitely excited to play it. Also, that it's co op. I'm excited to see if they really built that co op in because I think I think it'd be a fun game for you and I to play together, assuming that mm -hmm. the co op is well built and not just two people running around a level together yeah um I, there was one other thing in here oh how how do you feel about um talking about hype how do you feel about all the people in the audience yelling constantly oh my gosh i it got to the point um it was like halfway through i'm like what is ha and then i remembered that it's open to the public now and i'm like it's, well no the bethesda it's, e3 press conference you still have to get a it's different oh, you have to get was? a you have to get a pass okay for it. Uh, so I, I'm I'm just saying in in all the conferences overall, it seemed like a lot of people were interrupting and stopping people from talking, and yeah. I'm like, you can't do that. It's yeah, you so can't. annoying. It's and it's not even that. It's there was an article today about that front row crew and one of the people who was in the front row and kept standing up for every game and screaming constantly. And this guy was like, no, 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 I, I don't work for ZeniMax. I don't work for Bethesda. I'm just genuinely excited about their games. It's like, if it gets to the point where your screaming is making people think that you are a paid marketer in the audience, then your screaming is hurting the game more than cheering it on. 
yeah. and that and that's I, I think they've taken I think they've gone to an extreme where they've gone from businessman present the stock numbers present like the sell through units at an E3 press conference to bring the fan in and have them cheer for their games but they've gone to the opposite extreme too much so now you're bringing in the most flamboyant fanboys who just want to scream and shout and say things like you're breathtaking or just constantly interrupt with yeah. screams just so that they can get themselves into an e3 moment and that's it's made the press conferences worse it's very cringy yeah so uh final quick thing uh that death loop game i i didn't there wasn't enough in that trailer for me to understand what it's really about other than literal death loop but i love arcane so whatever they want to do i'll i'll play yeah um, that, that did look very good um so hot takes Hot takes. I think it's that E3. Uh, Bethesda needs to stop doing E3 press conferences. Um, I I disagree with you slightly in that it's. I don't think last year's was that good either. I think it was the year where they announced Fallout 4. They had absolutely a reason to put on a press conference, but since then they have been cobbling it together from whatever they can pull out of the closet, and they can't present it well enough. They try very hard. They fill it with all these fan moments to say, "Hey, look, we're relevant too," and it just ain't working. Um, Will, what's your hot take? My hot take is that the videos with all the fans saying different things was really stupid and just uh, admit your mistakes, people. Yes. Yes. You don't, you don't need to. Oh, it was so dumb. So okay. Dumb. What's next? Uh, next up is uh, Ubisoft. Uh, so as I get this going, um, did you watch the Ubisoft press conference, by the way? I did watch it. I wanted to, and then I took a two hour nap instead during the press conference. So uh, I, the, I watched tired. all the press conferences uh, late, except for Nintendo. Okay, yeah. So Ubisoft, I, I know I wasn't going to be that excited for it anyways, so I ended up just watching it later. Okay, so that is 10 minutes on the clock for Ubisoft. I think I started Bethesda, so how about you start us off with Ubisoft? Um, uh, Watch Dogs Legion. Uh, yes. very excited I think that game actually looks really cool and if it can accomplish what they are setting out to do I think uh, I think it'll be a really incredible game for those of you who don't know or didn't watch Legion there's no main character in Watch Dogs Legion you are literally playing an NPC they're uh, procedurally generated with like a background and you like choose an archetype for them <clears throat> and so you're working for dead sec and then you go around recruiting other npcs and you can switch to any other npc if you recruit them properly um there's like permadeath for npcs but it's literally like uh, they all the <clears throat> different voices are voice modulated and like designed so even if two characters by the same actor are talking to each other you can't tell the difference <clears throat> uh from the gameplay I think it looks really fun. I think it looks really seamless. And I think London is an incredible setting for like uh, that sort of children of men, oppressive society, government taking over, people getting beat up by police in the streets, that sort of thing. So I'm very yeah. excited for that game. I, I That's agree. someone I, who I didn't think, even play um, the first two. Yeah, I think, I, think, I think the premise when it leaked, um, it felt like it was... It felt like almost they were biting off more than they could chew in the premise of you can play as any NPC. And I think seeing this like five, 10 minute gameplay walkthrough was pivotal to show that this is not just a premise that they are using to sell the game, but it plays like every other game that you really do, that you really are building a roster of swappable playable characters and that you're recruiting them. And then each of them have, you know, proc gen bonuses and different elements there was one guy in this demo i think he's coming up soon i'm not sure if we're going to catch it where it just says this guy uh has a positive to to dealing damage but as negative as he, he may die randomly and i thought that was hilarious <laughs> um yeah there it is plus 100 damage may die randomly and i just thought that like the scanning mechanic in Watch Dogs is always fun but now that you're actually scanning it with like gameplay components in terms of let me try to find somebody who's interesting or weird or has the component the attribute that i want is is going to be very exciting and i think this may actually be the first watchdog game that i play yeah I, i'm it's a natural progression for that scanning thing and i think it's going to be really cool um, uh what's next 
Um, yeah. So let's see what else they got. They've got um, just, just dance. Through. Yes, of course. Just dance. What is this? Oh, this is more. Watch <laughs> my Dogs. favorite thing is that Just Dance is still coming out on the Wii. Oh my god! How was I? Didn't watch this moment live with um, Mythic Quest. How was this? Um. So the Always Sunny music played. And I was like, what the heck? And so I paused it, and I, and I called Karen in from the uh, kitchen because she likes Always Sunny. I'm like, oh, watch this. Because I assumed it would be some Always Sunny game yeah, or, like, some sort of thing. And then they announced this Mythic Quest thing, which... Uh, it, why do I announce it at E3? It doesn't look very good. Yeah. I, like, I'm and sure why, it's funny. Yeah. I think this is a bad trailer for it. I think this is a bad place to announce it. Um... It's weird. The, I will say all the like fake footage of the game looks mm-hmm. really good. I know, if yeah. That makes sense. Like it looks yeah. like something I would play. Um, yeah. But yeah, we'll see. I, I it's yeah, it's two parts. It's why announce this at your E3 thing and because did you just want to get a ce- another celebrity and why would you why show this footage because it's not very good. Okay, how about um, Ghost Recon? I think it's called Breakpoint. Did you play any Ghost Recon Wildlands? Uh, I played maybe two or three hours of Wildlands. Um, other than that, I own it. But no. I think I played maybe 45 minutes of it. My game, my experience with that game has always been tarnished because it was the first game I played after I built my new BV PC with like a 1080 and like 16 gigs of RAM. And I was like, all right, I just got into the beta for this. Let's boot it up. And it ran at 15 frames per second. Like there was no reason why it should run that poorly with my new beefy PC. And I was like, this is bad. And then I think I played it like an, a free weekend, like a couple months later. And I finally got to experience the gameplay and it just wasn't that exciting. So to see them kind of stick to that and do more of it, I, I, I don't know. I Maybe I'll play a demo of it, but I'm just not. I'm not excited for it. I, I kind of wish they'd go back to, you know, Ghost Recon Advanced Warfighter, and this feels like it's going a bit too Hollywood. Yeah. I, I think the dog coming out on stage was the best part. Very cute. Um, Very cute. That whole thing. He's such a cutie. Um, uh, what Just else? Dance? Are you going to get Just Dance 20 on uh, Wii? Yep. Made the joke already, but yes, I'm going to get it on the Wii. Love it. Uh, Rainbow Six Quarantine. I, is that the same as the thing that came out like two years ago? A year and no. a half ago? No, this is coming out like later this year or something. No, I know, but the the last time they had it, it was a limited time event for like a month. I oh, think so it was think called Rainbow Six Quarantine. I'm not and sure. And you were like fighting zombies or aliens or something. So I think I think this is more of a permanent version of it. Yeah. Oh, um, actually, yeah, this is. I'm looking at uh, Division Two. I don't feel the need to get any of that DLC. No, isn't it free though? No, it's not. It's with the season pass. Yeah, um, but there is a movie coming out. Uh, yes, they did. They did reveal oh. that. Jessica Chastain, Jake Gyllenhaal. That's uh, the part okay I missed. With that. Ep- the episode three of the DLC brings you back to New York City. I Who cares? That. Uh, we hey, should finish that game. We should finish I this. Uh, we should finish this segment and go to hot takes. Um, here's my hot take: uh, Rainbow Six. I'm, I'm sorry, Ghost Recon, Breakpoint, uh, Division 2, Just Dance, and uh, I don't even know what other games they played. Who cares? We don't care. Bring better games next time, buddy. Where's the Where's the pirate game? The one that's going to be better than Sea of Thieves. Where's that? What did you do, Ubisoft? This was dull. I'm glad I took a nap. What's your hot take, Will? My hot take is that uh, nobody cares about your... Super Smash Brothers Melee clone. Brawlhalla. Oh. I even had to... I forgot what you were even talking about. Until you also, <laughs> no one cares about For Honor anymore. I didn't even know that was an Ubisoft game until it came at the press conference, and it was like yeah, two... Yeah, me neither. It was like two realizations. It was like... It was two questions. It was, oh, that's an Ubisoft game? And then, why are you talking about this at E3? And why are you uh, adding Adventure Time characters? The show's ugh. like that show's over. Who knows? The good news is we've got two and a half minutes in the bank. Oh dear lord! I just exited out of the timer. Yeah. yeah. Let's just go to the up. next thing. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so uh, next up is hey. By the way, how's chat? Uh oh. 
Yeah, you weren't watching chat. Were Mom's you? here. Sorry, I was looking at press conference stuff. Hi, stream mom. Uh, stream mom, he said that he couldn't make the thumbnail. That's okay. It's all good. We'll get you. We'll get you another time. Um, honestly, we we've been unpacking, and I was a little sick during the trip, and I'm still recovering. And I have another trip that I have to leave for the airport at like three thirty in the morning tomorrow. So things mm -hmm. have been very busy, very harried stream. Uh, what's next? Next up is Square Enix. So as I get this set up, did you happen to watch the Square Enix press conference? I did. I watched the entire thing. Okay, cool. So let me um. Let me kick this off then. As I say that, I'm just going to adjust this text so it's more centered. A little bit more. Okay, so Square Enix, um, they kicked it off with a whole bunch of Final Fantasy VII. Um, I'm glad that I'm playing through this game right now and I am going to play more of it. I'm about a third of the way through um, because all of this is, like I know what all of this is and I know how to tie it into the old game. But, Will, I'm curious, you have not played the game at all before. How are you feeling about Final Fantasy VII Remake? Uh, I think it looks really good. I'd play it. Uh, I'm not a JRPG fan um, as far as, like, turn-based, choosing things, getting spells and stuff. Uh, so this looks really good. Uh, I've never played the original, although I do want to because so many people have told me to. But I might just hold out for this. Yeah, I, I think um, I think we'll have to see, but for right now, I think they are different enough that you could play both. Um, the one thing I... This comes out next year. The one thing I'm uh, disappointed in them is they are still hiding the fact that this is episodic. Like, you have to dig deep to find out that this is still episodic. And it's basically them saying, oh yeah, this first game is only going to be in Midgar, which if you're not familiar with the game, the game takes place outside of the city, and they're saying this first game is only within the city, um, which is, I don't know, maybe the first 20, 25% of the game. Um, and oh, they're wow. calling this Final Fantasy VII Remake, not Episode One, not Part One, just the full title. And I feel like that's very disingenuous of them. Yeah, also it's a bad title. Yeah, to have Remake in it. Well, I don't know. Actually, I think it's a good title because it's been, that's like, I, I feel like before this was announced, the Final Fantasy, the phrase Final Fantasy VII Remake was more popular than the phrase Final Fantasy VII. Right, but I would call it like Final Fantasy Clouds Quest or something. No, I no, no. Know. I would absolutely call it Final Fantasy VII Remake because that's what people no. want. They want to play the Final Fantasy VII Remake. That's what no, they know it is. That's my hot take. It's a bad title. Yeah, fuck off. Um, <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> we okay, get one. So wanna... PG-13, we, we get one. one. We got one. I just took it. Okay, so um, they've also got uh, more Final Fantasy VII. How did you feel about that presentation? I mean, I'm just scrolling through here. It's like the first, literally the first 20 minutes of the press conference is uh, talking about the game, showing some game montages, showing a, an extended boss fight. Um, how did you feel about that in terms of presentation? I thought it was good. I, I will say, I, I don't want this to come across the wrong way. Um, but having your developers speak first in Japanese and then have a long pause while the person translates it, especially when it's like three people, yeah. I don't think works as well as they think it did. I, I, I don't think it was intentional. For no, them. it wasn't intentional to well, no, be sorry, like but weird I, or something. I think it had a positive impact, but in an unintentional manner. I think that kind of element of the developer speaking in Japanese and then you hear the translation is like it's it's intoxicating for a weeaboo you know it's ah! it's it's like oh yes hatori san tell me about my game arigato gazaimasu you know it's it is it's like oh this is an authentic japanese game and that means that it's an authentic jrpg and jrpgs are the best games in the entire world and so hearing the japanese makes it feel more authentic I don't, I don't know. Think... I just thought it made the press conference a little bit too slow. Yeah, I, I agree. It does slow it down. Um, I think it it unintentionally worked for what they were trying to do, which is trying to sell a JRPG to a Western audience almost. Um, okay, I'm going to skip ahead a little bit. Dragon Quest Builders 2, anything on that? I don't really think so. Uh, I want to try it. 
I've heard they're good. Um, so I heard the I, first one was good. I'm not talking about Kingdom Hearts three. Um, Mom agrees with me. Um, the translator's low. Yeah, translator's low. Yeah. I have nothing um, against how about, um, Japanese out, people. What's this called? Outsiders? No, no, you can't take your words back. <laughs> Listen, Outsiders looked good from People Can Fly. It did. I didn't know what any of it would ever be. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm but, excited. It looks like it could be a new Metal Gear in a way. Okay. Outriders. That's what it's called. Yeah, looks kind of meh. Like, yeah. I like... I don't know. At some point, cinema like I know people are complaining about cinematic trailers, which I honestly I don't care. If you don't yeah. have, if you can't show your game, cool, show a cool cinematic trailer. But you're asking me for my opinion on this. It looks good, but it's nothing that the game's going to look like. So I don't even know what to think. Also, is that guy huge? I couldn't tell. I'm not sure. Let's talk about. We got about five minutes uh, left. Let's talk about the Avengers real quick. What did you think of this? Is the reveal I, of the Crystal Dynamics Avengers game? Um, I think they accidentally brought in the stun doubles instead of the real avengers um, <laughs> yeah sorry i stole that joke from twitter <laughs> it i think it's funny. i think it's from a comedy film it's from space balls i think oh yeah, yeah yeah but it was someone linking that on twitter um this game no, looks dull I, this game looks dull yeah also I, I have no idea what i'm doing Am I playing them? Am I not playing them? Am I making my own? Oh no, hero? you're definitely playing them. You're definitely playing them. But you're they not said something about hero. creating your own hero. Did they though? Yeah. Um. So I don't even know now. I, also, what is the game? Is it? It's what just is this. It? It's just this. It's a is Hollywood that gameplay movie. right there. It's a movie adaptation. You know how you play those movie adaptations and they're like, "Hey, remember this scene in the movie? You're gonna play yeah, but like it's a, not a movie a bad, adaptation. It's like well, no, but a comic the, book guy. They're like, "Remember this scene from a movie? You're gonna play a bad facsimile of an action scene. That's what this movie is. That's what this game is. Except there's no movie behind it. So they're just like, "Oh, look, you're the whole How about you just jump across a bridge? This looks dull. I don't think this is that exciting. It's like." Yeah. I just don't Ugh. know what is it, but they're they're talking about like like it's a games as a service too. So what do you and there's also a campaign, but there's also not a campaign. Well, they said I, games as a service, like in the I don't want to say it was a leak, but there was like a uh, a panel description, and I'm I don't know if they said games as a service in. I don't remember them saying this in the presentation and everything they showed, none of it says games as a service unless they're talking about DLC as games as a service. Because no, this but is, it's, it's this like a live like, game. I don't think it's a live game, though. I'm How pretty is it sure a live it game? is. All they're doing is showing a campaign. That's not a live You're, game. They said there's single player, and then there's like the regular... There's a single player campaign, and then it's like a live game where you team up with your friends and you unlock things. All when do they say stuff. that, though? They say that in this press conference? Yeah, they said in the press conference. This game looks stupid. I don't... I, it's like they don't even know what they're doing. Yeah... I just also that thing with the voice actors was really weird. Yeah, who cares? And also, Don't... people cheering you when you say there's no loot boxes. Come on. Don't you're only saying that so people cheer for you. Yeah, I, I just cares. feel like. Do you know how many costumes this... they're gonna sell for that game? People were excited for this game because it's Avengers. It's a triple A studio. It's a studio that's been doing um, Tomb Raider, and they did a really good reboot of it. They did an interesting. They've been doing some interesting yeah. stuff with that IP, and then they pull out this, and this, you know what this honestly looks like? This looks like a triple A mobile game. This yeah. looks like those fake trailers for mobile games that are a lot of CG, but there's also just enough twinge of like fake gameplay in it that you think it may actually look like that. That's what this looks like. Yeah. Mom, uh, mom says... I need to see more gameplay and a bit more about the story before I make a proper opinion. I agree hundred percent. Like this game, like this game could come out and be the most amazing thing I've ever played from an Avengers property. But from this stuff they showed it, it's exactly what you said. It looks like a B movie based off a movie thing with like, they couldn't get the likeness for the actors yep. and all this stuff. Also, this is Hank Pym, not Scott blah, blah, blah. So it's the original Ant-Man. I don't know. It's crazy that's weird yeah and i think that's... i think you're right in that they are saying a lot of things and they are not clarifying what this game is is it is it 
you know, destiny like where it's a loot loot shooter in a way for, as a live service. Is it a campaign with just standard multiplayer? Is it just DLC? Yeah, are they just yeah. saying games as a service because that's the hot thing to say right now? Or does it actually incorporate those elements? I don't know. Yeah. You know, I don't know. This was your big um, reveal. You've been sitting on it for years. You could have done a better job than having that awkward moment of two minutes of people saying, Iron Man, Iron <laughs> the strong Man. guy, the Hulk. And it's like, we know who's in the game. You already showed it. You don't have to spend two minutes saying character names. Will Also, we just had 11 years of movies. <laughs> I know. Closing it out, Square Enix, what's your hot take? Um, I'm just going to say they announced Kingdom Hearts 3 DLC, which reminded me, Ian, how are you doing on Kingdom Hearts 3? <laughs> I don't want to talk about it. And my hot take is Final Fantasy 7, great presentation. Uh, the Avengers, real bad presentation. Square Enix, you want one step forward, one step back. You did better, you did worse. Um, I'm, I don't know if I'm even looking forward to next year. Try harder. Yeah, uh, Square Enix, stop with the Final Fantasy. Stop it. Just stop. stop. It. Guess what's up I next, I don't Will? care about Final Fantasy. Nintendo. Nintendo. I love so Nintendo. Let me get this kicked off. Let me get this full screened. All right, start us off, Nintendo. Uh, overall impressions. How are you feeling about this presser? I'm so excited. Um, actually, I so overall impressions. I was upset they didn't really announce anything super new that we didn't already know about. But also, Nintendo said last year, and it's the same as this year. They're pretty much only announcing games that are have set release dates release dates like they try not to announce things that aren't coming out firmly anymore i don't think they said that about this press conference though i mean they did but that's okay but they didn't because of the last game right but they did that last year with metro prime yeah but my point just being i don't i don't think it was a strong they, they didn't i don't think they went into this press conference saying we are only talking about games with release dates Right, but that's that's been Nintendo's strategy for like two or three years now. Yeah, where they they, they try still to focus like on announce the... things that will of course come out like a yeah, new yeah, yeah. Metroid Prime, but, but it's they not like, be like but it's not like in the past they have done directs or whatever where they say we are only talking about games that are coming out this year. Like they explicitly say it. I don't think they explicitly said that this time. Right. Sure. Um. Okay. So let's start out with the bad news. Animal Crossing. I called it. It got delayed completely understandable they weren't showing it they weren't talking about it they didn't even say before the press conference or before e3 that that, is, that it was going to be on the show floor or anything understandable but i still think it looks good although isn't it it's not playable on the show floor but there's like a gameplay demo that shows like the first 20 minutes or something yeah from treehouse the treehouse stream yeah. i believe <laughs> Bless you. Bless yeah, I, I think it looks good. The only thing is it looks kind of zoomed in. I get really weirded out by games that are too zoomed in for the resolution they are displayed at. Because the minimum resolution for this is 720 if you're playing handheld. And mm -hmm. this feels zoomed in. You know what I mean? I wonder if it's just zoomed in for cinematic effect. It could be. I really hope so. Uh, that was something that really turned me off Stardew Valley was playing it at 1080p and it felt very zoomed in um but yeah i'm excited for this it's animal crossing um i think the switch makes it great because it's going to be kind of like the 3ds you can take it with you much easier to play you know 20 30 minutes per day and kind of get your daily chores in yeah um, I'm, i love animal crossing so let's just skip through a little bit dragon quest are you excited about that uh, dragon quest as a new playable character as well as dragon quest 11 coming to the switch no neither am i excited about I, I've been getting hyped about Dragon Quest XI because of um, uh, the good work of uh, Ben Moore and Michael Huber at Easy Allies constantly talking about this series and how this is a great one. And even Jeff Gerstmann talking about how he enjoyed this on console. Um, I think he was playing on PS4. So to see it come to Switch, I think it's going to be... Might as well. Might as well give it a yeah. shot. I'll probably try uh, it. Also, a hot tip for Mom. Uh, Stardew Valley has a zoom feature. You can zoom in and out. Uh, I do know that. Well, unless they changed it significantly since launch, but the zoom out wasn't far enough for me. They may have changed it since then. Um, Man, that's weird. But I, I also I had the same issue anyway. with the Dota 2 when I was playing it, where you couldn't zoom out far enough. So uh, just as a quick aside, like you would, there were some 
attacks that the range was further than your screen could see. So you, you would be trying to target somebody who was off your monitor and you couldn't zoom out further. And it was very, very annoying. Anyways, uh, Luigi's Mansion three. What did you think about that? Uh, I'm excited. I, I actually, man, I say that a lot. I've never played a Luigi's Mansion game. So I've never played one either. Let's I'll, I'm, I'm down, especially I'm since hes- it's coming out this year. I'm a little hesitant because even with the gameplay they're showing, this looks like it looks like it has it looks a little thin in terms of gameplay depth. They showed like three different attack types and like two different puzzle solving mechanics, which was like pull a door open and like the goo the goo gooigi. Oh, the gooigi. I'm wondering if that's it for mechanics, like gameplay mechanics. And if so, then it's like that's a very limited toolbox for you to use for an entire game. So I'm hesitant. Yeah. I hope I hope I'm wrong. I hope it's more like Captain Toad where it's a very simple premise but they 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 expand on it and stretch it out and and iterate on it so well that it works really that it ends up being a great game. But uh I'm just not that excited by what I've seen. Yeah. Oh. I'm I'm excited I guess as just someone who's never played one. So um, I'll play it. Link's Awakening. Yes, Very yes, 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 100%. Never played the original. People talk about it like it's one of the best Zelda games of all time. I'm excited to pick it up fresh. And the like procedurally weird dungeons you can put together? Yes. I'm down, 100%. Okay, I'm just kind of skipping uh, through here. Cadence of Hyrule, I will play. Yeah, I'm thinking about playing comes that comes out as well. to, uh, Thursday? Yeah, very soon, very soon. I heard okay. it's, a, yeah, I think it's Thursday, so 13th. A little bit of Pokemon. Um, <laughs> it's supposedly Astral a lot Chain. more linear. How are you feeling about Astral Chain? Uh, I couldn't couldn't care less. Yep, right there with you. I mean, it looks physically looks good, but it's just doesn't seem like my type of game. Doesn't seem like my type of uh, story. Um, hot take from mom. Need mm-hmm. to get this off my chest. New Contra game looks awful and heavily disappointed in Konami. Uh, that's not a hot take that's a solid opinion right there um i saw it and i was like what am i watching why does this look bad um i wish i could skip to it real quick i can't find it and i just it doesn't know they shouldn't have done that that looks like another bad mobile port i wouldn't be surprised if that if that you boot that up and it's a mobile game where it's a clicker idler thing with a crazy graphics on it i don't no bueno i mean Uh, on the flip side Dark Crystal XCOM looks great. It does. I, I that was so weird because it started <laughs> out by saying it started out by showing footage of Dark Crystal and then saying Netflix at the bottom. And I had zoned out just enough that I thought they were announcing the Netflix app is finally coming to Switch. I did too. <laughs> and I was like, great, was, great. Um, Witcher three on Switch. Okay, sure. If anyone's never played that and you uh, can get it on Switch, I was thinking about it, but I gotta I gotta see how that runs first because they that people are not afraid of putting out bad ports on the switch that do yeah. not run well and uh, as a quick aside i've tried to play witcher 3 about four times now and i still can't get into it i think i was i think i tried to do it once and i just it wasn't the right time for me i actually really enjoyed the story it just wasn't the right time for me yeah i did too i just i the mechanics i thought were so weird i tried to do it mouse and keyboard and it wasn't working and i was like yeah i probably need a controller for this um, uh the they're releasing a bunch of the secret of mana games including the original let's talk about the smash character the other smash character reveal of banjo kazooie how you feeling about uh, that i'm pumped i'm glad it's happening yep i People love the fan speculated service about it i yeah. i really hope every character reveal is the exact same donkey kong stuff oh my god but they just add in like because king k rule was there now and he was the last one so yep. i want banjo and kazooie to be there for the next one it's just always the exact same thing i just <laughs> i so funny yeah i i think i think having two characters in one is a really interesting mechanic i, I they've kind of done it before with duck hunt etc i i just love that they're embracing the fan service but doing it in a way that doesn't feel cheesy yeah, I wonder um, if they'll play the same. Maybe. Well, well I mean, they are a single character, but I mean, like how the dash move is Kazooie on the bottom. Um, yeah. 
so it's just, it's just interesting how they they combine like that um it kind of makes me want to go play banjo kazooie so we've got a minute and a half left let's talk about the big reveal at the end the one that people went crazy for the breath of the wild sequel is in development for the switch how you feeling i was excited i was like oh dlc and then uh yeah they said it was a sequel so i'm a lot of people are speculating i thought this when it said that it's like sort of a majora's mask situation where they're just instead of creating a whole new game with a whole new look they're gonna stick with this like why i can't even think of this engine and all this stuff and they're just gonna put out another game with all those graphics um probably most of the same assets and just add some story stuff to it and also uh speculation of playable zelda something about how if you play the trailer backwards the music that plays is a zelda theme like a theme for zelda as a character uh, i just heard that they say something backwards and it's like something or another this also made me want to go finally finish breath of the wild um it's good There's, it doesn't have a fantastic that. ending in a way it's more about playing it than it is the ending but but yeah i'm excited yeah, i just I, i'm very hesitant because they need to change that world up a lot i think a I think a big part of that game was exploring the physical world um you know like seeing a mountain in the distance and heading towards it and finding the trails there and if they don't mix that world up enough i'm not sure it's going to have the same uh luster as breath of the wild yeah, I'm assuming there'll be some sort of cataclysmic event that will change everything. Okay, so there we go. That's done for Nintendo. What is your hot take, Will? Uh, my hot take is no one cares about Dragon Quest in Smash. Um, my hot take is uh, Microsoft had a better press conference. I think Nintendo did a good job of loading it with a bunch of games, but there was a lot of filler in there, and there was a lot of uh, anime games that are just for a very specific audience and probably shouldn't be uh, loaded so much at an e3 press conference um a lot of people are saying nintendo one but i think it was really uh, microsoft uh, i think that kind of segues us to the overall e3 impressions um what did you think will e3 2019 uh i thought it was great it was it seems so quick this year i don't know if I like maybe i watched them we were all traveling, pretty quickly you know yeah, so we kind of missed it um, but I'm excited. There's a lot of good games coming out in the next year. So, yeah, Looking especially even it. just the next couple months. I think this one did a good job of um, also lining up early next year. 2020 was like a nebulous future date for me, but now I'm feeling 2020 is a lot of good games front half of the year, next gen second half of the year. Yeah. Um, yes, sir. How about chat? Any final impressions from chat? Um, I was just saying, I uh, hope you can play a Zelda castle by me. Oh, it looked, he sa said it looked like the castle was taking off. Yeah. So it was a weird thing. To a different location. That would be interesting. Yeah. Or you'd I, like I go didn't notice space. that. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, I thought it was just exploding out. Um, they oh, did Mom talk about how the name, they did oh, talk about Forza the Lego racer DLC. Yeah. That's pretty interesting. Um, they did talk about how, um, in making breath of the wild, it was easy. It was very easy with the engine and the tools they developed to make that world and to iterate on it quickly. So I wouldn't be surprised if it actually is a new location because I don't think it would be as much of a technical obstacle as it would be for yeah. other games. And I can see this coming out relatively soon mm -hmm. in the sense of probably like 2021. Yeah. Um, Maybe 2020, uh, late 2020. Yeah, but anyways, uh, Mom, you want to know my reaction on the Forza Lego Racer DLC? I think it looks really cool. Um, actually, if you didn't know this, Jake wrote an article about a year ago that said if they could just make a Forza-style game but with Lego. Um, so uh, I'm sure he actually seemed very excited about it. Yeah, I, think I will probably play it. Yeah, I th I'm definitely going to play it. I think that's my first Forza Horizon expansion i'm actually going to to buy it looks pretty good um especially the new world with the lego elements built in as opposed to just adding the lego cars themselves yeah um i think that's going to do it for this week's live stream um a little bit of an interesting one i know the presentation was a little wonky i think if we're going to do more discussion type stuff in the future i'll probably try to put together a better overlay but um i think i i kind of like this idea of e3 coverage but it's only an hour long and we force ourselves to focus on the highlights because 
we, we've done e3 coverage before for past websites where it's just like 10 hours of content for a single e3 or more and i feel like that's too much i kind of like crunching it down to an hour how do you feel about that i think it's a lot lot easier to handle that especially when like i i follow giant bomb and so i can watch all their content but i it's not like if i follow multiple websites i don't would not know what to do yep yep exactly okay well um when you're not traveling to iceland and missing e3 where can people find you and your content uh you can find me on twitter at hunt270 and you can find me on Twitter at Think Gibson, and you can find all of our Subpixel stuff on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Subpixel Team. That's where we like to post about our videos, our trips, our behind the scenes stuff from our doc shoots and various recordings. Uh, and you can find our videos at subpixelfilms.com. That takes you directly to our Subpixel YouTube channel. Uh, well, if you had to promote one video, this, this, this weird dark crystal thing is popping up. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> if you could promote one video that you recommend people go watch right now from our channel what would it be uh i would promote the sonic dreams collection that just came out it's yeah good yeah it's pretty good a uh, very it. weird game i i enjoyed playing it um so i think that's pretty much it uh thank you for joining us will and thank you for uh all those people out there watching us and uh happy e3 everybody bye bye